thanks everyone for joining today. Um, I'm really, really pleased you agreed to come along and I'm thrilled that you're going to be part of our event. Um, probably just a little bit of background. So building on all the work we did last year with you and, and we're really grateful that the Warren has, you know, decided to carry on this theme of data and uh, what you are, what you share and the state of data and what we're doing about it. So um, I'm Jen, I'm uh, coordinator of Defend Digital Me, and we are here to support you today in your discussion around your rights and what matters to you about data and privacy. So my name's Sophie, um, and in the last few weeks, I've uh, managed to complete my level two health and social course, health and social course, and passed it. Hi, I'm Andromeda. In the past few weeks, I have recreated literally every musical within the space of my bedroom and every movie I've ever watched probably and I've slept a lot that, that's basically it. Hi <laughs> uh, I'm Andrew and in the past few weeks I've been doing a couple of spoken word videos on the pandemic and lockdown so yeah that's what I've been doing. Yo oh yeah my name is uh, Ash uh, and in the past couple of weeks uh, I have my friend Ben move in with me to help me through lockdown, uh, which is good. Helps me do the cleaning and the pots, the washing I dry. Good system. And uh, I tried to make an EP, use GarageBand, learn how to use that. Um, watching hours and hours of YouTube to try and learn how to just do the simplest things. But I'm getting there. Yeah, and I'm I'm Lydia. I'm a youth worker at Warren. Um, and I've just been sorting, sorting my house out, really, which isn't very interesting, but... There you go. Privacy to me uh, is obviously a very important thing. Uh, it's a personal thing. Uh, it can be different to everyone. Um, obviously, depending on what websites you use, certain things might be private and uh, certain things might not be, especially nowadays. I notice there's a lot of people that have a lot more public profiles, um, especially for businesses. Or if you are, you know, a freelance worker or anything like that, you need to get your work out there. You want a public profile, but then that can also come with a lot of issues, um, especially with Facebook. There's a lot of people that I know that have had a lot of issues with people finding out their their phone numbers and having photos of them. And you know, when they question why, it's well, you've got it on Facebook and you haven't got it on private and things like that. And I feel like, especially in recent years, there's been a lot more clicking on of, of this kind of um, stuff, uh, which is really good and beneficial. But there's people who I still know who have no, no idea that there's certain, pri like Facebook's privacy settings can be so specific to a point of where you can have specific people to see specific things and people don't really know like that sort of stuff. So to me, privacy is very important. And it needs to be, you know, regularly checked and updated. Like I've recently just got a new uh, card, um, and I've had to update all my billing information for a lot of things. And it's it's scary to know that there's like, you know, eBay and Amazon and things. They just have my card details. Like I know they're not going to do anything with them, but they have them. And if someone was to get that, then I don't know. That's all, you know, my penny change in my bank account gone. But so it's scary. Yeah, I just want to say that um, data privacy is one of those things you don't miss till you've lost it, really. You don't really think about what you're giving out, but when you suddenly realise that maybe your phone number or bank details have gone into the hands of scammers or people who sell it on, that's when you start to take notice of it. So there needs to be more awareness early on. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just, I completely agree. I mean, it's your 12th human right to be free from, like, to have complete freedom, privacy, and, you know, to not have your reputa reputation be, like, smeared based on things that have been found from your private life. And I feel like there's just, like, a general level of hypocrisy when it comes to, like, the people that have control of the data. They don't, they don't want that information to get out, but they can sell ours to advertisement companies. I just find it very, um, you know, we're humans too. We we deserve our rights too. Yeah, it sounds quite. It's quite sinister, isn't it, in in a way. What What about you, Sophie? Uh, I just I think it's important because not much people like realise where your data and that goes. So they're just putting things like details in places, and then mm -hmm. they soon to realise like they can get scammed from things, and they just don't realise as much as what they should. Do you feel more aware now about 
data that's been taken off you when you when you are online yeah i'm very careful now like what i do um and like if people ring and say like this person i don't give no information out. so i've been like more aware since about this this going on i'll ask you something if a I was thinking it sounds very much like you're sort of talking about not being comfortable with the balance of power that some of these other people have about you. Is that is that something you think that's that's fair to say? You talked about Facebook and Amazon and companies. Do you think is it you and Andy you talked about, you know, wanting to be able to protect your reputation. So it's almost like um that privacy matters to you because it it either gives or takes away power that other people or other organizations have over you would that be fair do you think yeah most definitely i feel like there's a, a really sh strong difference between the people in power and the people below which shouldn't ever be the case um like if you look at like hindu philosophy the way that that is all like intertwined it's basically based on yeah i have the power but i am one of you i have the same experiences i am part of the same system that is making this happen and it, it, we aren't seen as that we're seen as lesser which means that our data is just data to them and we're not real human beings like yeah maybe i i don't care so much if my fbi agent is watching me watch star kid but like <laughs> at the same time if my like if i'm like just i don't know messaging a friend about the fact they're sad i don't want that information to be available to anyone even though i know it is so it's just like i don't know i get infuriated <laughs> yes. i think to, to me uh, sorry, uh, to me it's like the same risk as like putting your money in a bank like you know that's secure and it's there and it's safe but then uh, banks can get robbed and you know the amount of scary stories that you hear in the news of you know things getting hacked and you know as it seems to me as more data gets better protected people get better at you know cracking like the locks that are put down and stuff and um it is it is it is a risk but i don't know there is a lot more like warnings and precautions now like this is what we do with your data and stuff which you know I, it, they tell me but i'm still not fine with it it's you know it's it is a scary world with with this kind of stuff I just think there should be a choice between whether you can give that data up or not, or like what data you want to give up. Like when you're going through your terms and conditions, but if there's like something that you don't agree with, you can tick that and say, I don't want my data to be used for these purposes. But like, it's just not an available thing, which is problematic because it means that no matter what you try and do, people are going to have your information. Mm -hmm angry <laughs> yeah and we all need to use these we all need to use the internet don't we like for for loads of different aspects of our lives and you and you're totally right there doesn't seem to be any choice i think there was there were some really good questions you raised i think it was one of the last workshops you did at the warren and you, you were talking about um, could you even be anonymous on the internet anymore? You know, what did your identity mean to you? And the kind of questions around, could you be able to, to develop if you were not sure about, you know, sexual orientation or your personality, or perhaps you had questions around health, you know, what keeping your identity confidential meant to you? I think there's lots of really interesting questions around identity there. It's a really good question to ask. Andy? I was going to say, like, I feel like your privacy is the majority of your identity. And especially like within our generation, I feel like we're the first like generation of kids to like actually be raised with the internet. Like I've had Facebook since I was eight years old. So it's been like a massive stepping stone into forming my personality, but it's also meant that my personality hasn't become fully developed because I've seen so many different avenues in which it could go. Whereas you don't usually see that I, in like a day-to-day -day basis. Like you can watch TV and then be like, yeah, that's what I want to be. But 
now it's just like I can see literally every culture, every subculture, and I can learn from it. But that also puts me at risk when I'm I like delving into my own identity. Like when I was researching LGBT like issues and stuff to try and educate myself because I had internalized homophobia to deal with. Like I don't want that information to be public if I'm struggling with my own identity. I don't want that to be something that like I don't know my my dad could go in and see just because I've used that computer in the past like as much as you delete your history it doesn't completely get erased so it's like I don't know irritating um to me I think it it has shaped us like as as a generation like not everyone because some people like I think it depends how attached and how dependent you be- you become on the internet and things like that because Obviously, with me being 20, there was still a time when I went outside and played, uh, you know, in trees and on parks and things like that. But my brother, who is 13, he he games all the time. And then my sister, who is eight, she's always on YouTube and making TikToks and things like that. So there's, what, 10 years between me and my sister, five years between my brother. Those differences are so different. Like, yeah, my brother still goes out, but not as much as I did. And then my sister doesn't go out at all. So to me... It, it is it, it would be very easy to to shape the future generations using social media and things like that because it, to put your identity out there like who i am in my home is completely different to who i am in the warren or who i am if you know i i go to um you know like a fancy restaurant and things like that like you have different kind of personas that you put on in a, in certain social situations and i think it's the complete same online and like uh, there's certain people who can have complete like fake identities on on Facebook. Like they'll go by an alias and they'll have a different profile picture, and you know that's that's completely up to them. And I think that it's it's good that you can do that online. You know, you can be a completely different person, you know, behind but behind the screen than who you are in real life. Um, you know, and I think it is up to the individual what they choose to put online. You know, no one's forced to put you know, their date of birth on Facebook. No one's forced to, to do it. You can put, you know, my name could be Butterick Ashley instead of Ashley Butterick if I really wanted to. You know, so if you're willing to put your name up there, then, you know, that's your risk. And you, 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 there could be preventions put into place to like, you know, be like, this is the risk you're taking and tell you, you know, who can see that, who can see that and stuff like that, which you can find, but not on like a face value. You know, you have to go digging to, to, to specifically like, like privatize things on certain websites which i feel needs to it needs to be more public knowledge if you get what i mean and um, anyone want to say anything to do with that or andrew do you want to say anything uh, i'd just say that i think personally that social media has turned it into something of a competition of who can share the most things about themselves and get away with it because uh, um you could say what's like just happening in the world recently everyone has to share on the facebook what they think of it um like the protests going on in america everyone had to like share like a black screen as if it's like say, i disagree or agree with this you like you couldn't it felt like for a time in those like first few weeks everyone had to share their opinion you couldn't be silent otherwise you'd get judged and i think that's the way like cultures becoming the social media if you don't share you're not you're not relevant and do you and do you feel sort of pressure from that andrew i know i i know i feel a bit of pressure from that yeah um just like i said during them first few weeks of protest there was all them posts about it i thought oh god i'm not posting about this on my site uh, not on my page are people gonna think this about me if I don't do something or if I do post it so kind of like have a sort of effect on your behaviour or the way you see how you're presenting yourself to the digital world mm. yeah I think something I've sort of thought of as well which maybe with this question makes me think of um, like when when ads and things like that when they've got the data about you and ads and um, news stories and things like that are specifically posted to you because they think that you will be interested in in that and then and that plays a big part in in shaping your identity 
as well and your and your thoughts and your and your feelings. Do you know what I mean? Does anybody else sort of think like that at all? I mean, the the most popular social media network nowadays, TikTok, is literally built around that concept of showing you exactly what you like. Like if I go on my for you page, which I've only just started doing because I've just realized how the algorithm works. But if you go on your for you page, everything is tailor made to what you like, to videos that you've seen before, to make sure that literally every video you like is something that you want to consume. And the advertisements are designed the same way to look like the TikTok content, whereas they're actually just an advertisement. So it's like, I, I, I know as an 18 year old that that's what's happening, but a like, there's young kids on the, this, this app, like there's seven year olds like g going around uh, actually sorting out their personality through what they watch on TikTok, which is so strange. Like I can see them separating into these little like factions based on what side of TikTok they're on. And there's like the elite side and it, it's honestly chaos, <laughs> but that, that's just an insight to what, what the youngins are doing. <laughs> it's like what YouTube does, but like, kicked mm. up a notch like mm. you know as algorithms go yeah. you know the more the more type of things you watch on youtube like if for an entire week i watch diy videos the next week they're going to show me lots of diy videos and it's it's scary that computers understand me more than i understand me you know and like the amount of times mm. i've spoke about things and they've been on facebook or i've been on amazon and i've been like oh i need some guitar strings i've ordered some guitar strings and then on facebook there's guitar strings and i'm like I've just, you know, I've just ordered these. I don't need these anymore. But to the algorithm, it's, oh, this person likes this, like guitar strings. I'm going to show them guitar strings. So they buy more guitar strings. Oh. And, you know, it's, 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 it's scary that that can happen with anything that I search anywhere. It will appear as an advertisement somewhere else. But that, that's cookies, isn't it? Like the, the more you use a website, it does pop up always. Do you accept cookies? And I'm just blindly like, yeah, let me just keep scrolling. You know, why are you blocking me from doing what I want to do? And all them cookies I've got, uh, you know that track me throughout just a general day because you know i'm always googling things and, and searching things in, in ebay or just anything so they they could track me throughout an entire you know like web walk day i guess i'd call it you know like it, if it was to be a park they'd be like oh he, he went past the bench of amazon and now we need to advertise this there on his walk back and it's i don't want that i just want to peruse without having loads of stuff shoved in my face things i've already bought or don't need but at one point I thought it'd be cool to have that you know that's really interesting I'm, I'm listening to you thinking you know what your choices are are almost these sort of forced choices aren't they what the the companies have already decided should the should your choices be restricted to and listening to Andy talking about TikTok you know they're shaping your world your online world through the the choices that that company's making the values they've got i was really interested to hear you talk about tiktok because i think they recently admitted they had suppressed videos made by disabled people or i think they even went as far as saying you know they had they had reduced the the popularity ratings of, of videos that were coming up um sort of either by disabled or, or fat or determined like fat or ugly criteria and you think that's shocking these companies kind of putting their own values set onto what they think we want to see but how, how do you feel about that you know how do you take back that that choice or control of what you want to see do you think is it possible is it something we need to change somehow i i think it's about like investing your time in researching the actual social media that you're getting into and I think age limits definitely need to be like increased because the, the the stuff that I was posting on social media at the age of like 14 I shouldn't have been allowed to post on social media at the age of 14 I was cringy <laughs> but uh, other people are having this problem where they posted things whilst they were that age it just like comes up in their future as an actual evidence of them being awful at one point mm. but it, because the internet is such a vast archive, you, you could find probably a problematic situation with anyone. But the thing is with like TikTok, it's just they're purposefully pushing down people 
like they're, they're purposefully pushing down minorities. They've admitted to um, suppressing some of the Black Lives Matter movement stuff. Um, a lot of black creators' voices have been silenced. So other creators on TikTok, like myself, have been thriving when we talk about activism. But when black creators talk about their activism, it's it's not accepted. It's it's very strange to me. But about it, it's about looking into the social media platforms and actually working out where their values stand. Like there's new social media platforms forming every day by different creators. Like there's one called Star Pages, which I've recently got into, which is a, a black made um, like social media site. And it's about actually supporting creators instead of pushing down creators in order to make there be this like class system like there is on every social media platform. So yeah, I just found that interesting. <laughs> I think there is no way to beat it, you know. In order to beat the algorithm, you'd have to know what the algorithm does. Like, is it like uh, if you search cat food in three times, does it then log cat food as a thing that you like? Or do you have to consecutively do the same thing for it to know? Is it a case of repetition? But this is the thing. I only search guitar strings in once, and then I got three days worth of guitar string advertisements on Amazon on Facebook, you know. So I don't, I don't think there is a way to beat it. We're just going to be... Like, you know, it is a, it's like a, a sassy manipulation in a way. Like, you know, you don't know it's happened until it's happened. And then, you know, you, you unless you click onto it, you're just blindly scrolling. You know, it's, 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 it's fast paced and it's in the moment and it's gone by as quick as you saw it, I guess. Do you think is, is there enough information out there, to, say at school or in other places, do, do these things get explained to you? I mean, some places would, would start to talk about it in terms of, what they'd call digital literacy. You know, is there enough education out there on how these systems work and who owns them and, and how they control the information that they share, including your own? No. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I learned in school was your password needs to be strong. And if it's anything less, then someone will probably get it. And don't use one, two, three, four. <laughs> I should probably change my phone password. Yeah, I'd, <laughs> I'd say, given how many how many young people are using social media and stuff these days, from like eight years old, I think it should be taught in primary school at least just one lesson a, a year, just to tell them the basics. Just let young people know that what they share online is easily accessible to people. Look for it. You can't just delete it and it's gone forever. You have to stand by what you share. But yes, just basic lessons taught around that. I mean, like the eight-year-olds, just they know the consequences. I think that would be a good idea if you start it in primary school, and then like um, it should be trapped with the, handled the same way that sex education's handled. I think you know, because in primary school, I remember having a lesson in year five that was only like this: the teacher put a cartoon video on and left the room, and then came back in and was like, "Right, there you go, carry on." And it's like, okay, but then when we got through to secondary school, you get, you know, the biology lesson and more things like that. So I think as you go progress through school, it should start off with a, this is Facebook. This is what it's used to a point of where, you know, you could like, you know, you could talk about the dark web and things like that, how things are, more things are encrypted, you know, as you get older through school, because you know, as you get older, you can listen to things like that and not, you know, be scared by it and things like that. Because I think you don't want to be, put fear into people but then in a way you kind of want to highlight these things that can happen because it is scary you know yeah I like when I think it, it seems like the, you get quite a lot there's quite a lot of discussion around safeguarding online from a sense of like exploiting young people grooming online that sort of thing um but much, much less discussion around around this topic. And I think sort of education in, in schools, like you say, um, is a great is a great idea. Um I I, I, I was just gonna comment on my own experiences with learning about in the internet in school. Basically we were just told, Oh, don't talk to big scary men on the internet. Big scary men can pretend to be young girls on the internet and that don't get into a big scary man's van and it was like none of those things were ever going to happen to me because I'm not 
I'm, I'm not stupid, right? <laughs> but also because my mum kept an eye on me. Like, these aren't the things you need to keep focus on. Like, kids are usually being watched by their parents. And if they aren't, then that's bad parenting. But kids are usually being watched by their parents, like the kids that are below 13. And the focus should be trying to teach them what's actually going on on the internet rather than oh these are the bad things that can happen from the internet yeah they should be highlighted but i i definitely think explaining hey this is what um the surface web is it's everything that you get to see on google and then you can be like oh yeah this is what the deep web is so this is where all your personal information is and this is the dark web don't go there it's scary you'll get murdered i'm pretty sure that's what happens i don't know i've never been little bit so so <laughs> I think we all do to some extent in, in what ways Andrew uh, I think it varies by person by person um, some people will say when they're feeling down and everything just to get a few likes oh I'm feeling depressed today but they'll never say when they're happy and then it's the other way around people always show, show them having nights out and getting dressed up so happy they are but they'll never ever show a day where they're sat in watching the football or anything because they think they'll be judged for it or some kind of, you know, won't be as popular. Um, would you say, is your identity the same online as it is in person? <laughs> Andy? Well, right, okay, it depends what social media you're looking depends at. Depends if you're messaging or... <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it depends where I'm at on social media. But if I'm on my Instagram, like my main Instagram account is the business. So I'm not particularly being myself. I'm portraying a character who is a caricature of myself. So she's just like the extreme version of me, the really aesthetic part, the, the part of me that likes to cover myself in fake blood and yell about activism. That, that That's just what my social media is. But then if you go on my like private Instagram, it's like an extra layer of who I am as a person because you get to see like the non-aesthetic parts. You get to see where I am <laughs> as a mess, um, but it's also sharing the things that make me happy and the things that make me sad. So I think it definitely depends what level of social media you're looking at with someone because people will show a different perspective of their life publicly rather than privately to their friends. But yeah. Do you, do you do you try and hide sort of who you are on online, anybody? A little bit. Like I'm not going to put my address on there on my phone. Yeah, number. <laughs> you know, like there's there's just like levels to it. Like you know, like Andy said, using Instagram for business. If you have a f Facebook business page, well, you're going to need your address on there. You know, people are going to need to find where you are and things like that. But I think it's just there's a a clear difference between like personal social media business social media and stuff like that you know and like um again to touch on what andy said like i think social media is just like an amplification of how people would already be in real life like i don't know if it's just with me but like some of the stuff i say online i would say like opinions and all, especially with all this activist stuff going on if i share something on facebook you know there is a chance that someone could bring it up to me or comment on it and things like that you know, and then I've got to be prepared to defend myself and my opinion and stuff like that. If I'm willing to put it on Facebook, I have to be willing for the backlash. And, you know, the amount of times I've, I've gone to go write a post and then delete it and then come back to it and then delete it because of that. There's, there is that fear of, of, of getting judged just because you're trying to, to put, you know, your own message out there, trying to put support for the people to show that you were part of something. Um, but, you know, you can get a lot of backlash from that. Um, you know, there's been a lot of times where I've put, uh, it's just, especially in just recent weeks with all this Black Lives Matter stuff going on, you know, like I put up that um, I support it all. You know, Black Lives to me, it's not, there is no colour on it. It's all life matters, you know, fish, trees, anything that's got a pulse, all living, it just matters, you know. Um, and people gave me hate for that. They was like, no, 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 you know, you need to stick up with this, you need to stick with that. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm allowed my own opinion and you're allowed your opinion. That's fine, but let's leave it there. You know, but I think a lot of things that I do say and how I act online, I will, you know, do in real life. But then on Instagram, however, you know, real life doesn't have a filter, but Instagram has a lot of pretty ones. So I'm going to make them photos look lovely and paint my life to be amazing, you know. But then, 
some like it's like what Andrew said. Some people do that, and I'm 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 a person who does that. Every night out, I'm taking a million photos and I put it on the next day with some quirky caption, and everyone can show me love. You know, even though that day I'm actually hungover and you know <laughs> feeling awful. What about you, Sophie? Would you say you portrayed your online self is similar to your your actual self, real life? Well, I, don't, I don't really put that on Facebook about my life and that anyways. I just keep it to myself or like if I see people in person, then obviously I speak to them like that. But I don't go like putting all over Facebook, or, like my address and everything like that. Or like what's going on in my personal life I don't go writing statuses and I never wonder I know my account is private but there's still like people that I'm friends with on there that can see it so I don't really put much uh, yeah I'd also say that it, um, it affects your interpersonal messaging with people as well on Instagram and Facebook because um, I have friends who I mostly talk to on Messenger or Instagram Messenger or WhatsApp. And because we're like protected by the phone screens and we're not speaking face to face, I might say something that I'd never say to them to the face because I can just like back out of it on a message say, oh, I was just joking. But when you're face to face, it's like a different element of people reading your emotions and things like that. Yeah, I think yeah. people have a lot more confidence online because of that, that mask of social media. You know, yeah. like I can, be who I want to be you know like I said earlier people do make fake profiles if I really wanted to I could make a fake profile call myself Charlie and give my opinion to everyone who I know you know under this fake alias but you know people who do that I think that's just personal preference you know to me I'll my, you know my name's Ashley but on Facebook is Ash just so then you know it's a little bit harder to find me I guess you know uh, um with the inter I think it's an interesting point what you made Andrew about the interpersonal uh, and that sort of communication um and perhaps there's good and bad to that as as well you know um speaking to people online perhaps sometimes you don't feel like you want to speak to people face to face maybe um and i think it can work both ways like that yeah uh, um one example i have is i met some friends at a warren about a year ago we like um exchanged instagram messages for a bit and over time because it was mostly through instagram we were conversing i saw like built up a personality that i was more confident than i actually am so when i do see them in person now i have to put on the front i have to appear more confident they are because that's how they've gotten to know me that i'm more cheeky and more energetic so it can be a bit weird like putting up this facade when it that barrier of the messenger gets torn down and you face to face. Hey, is your hand up, Andy? Yeah, I know I look like a school child, but I don't know what else to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was gonna say, just like interpersonal connections, like um, th there is like that really big danger, but I think one of the most like, prevalent things nowadays is like parasocial relationships. Like you're seeing something, like somebody on social media so often that you start to like, be like, oh yeah, it's my friend. So, like, because you're interacting with each other's posts and stuff and then you meet each other in real life and you just kind of sat there awkwardly like what do we do now there's no memes to like we can't just you know uh, what what about schools anyone the only information i, I like genuinely know that my data was like given away is um, when we had the biometric system at one of my schools. So I had to give them my thumbprint, which means they now have my thumbprint, even though technically it was like decoded, or well, that's what they said to me. They have my thumbprint, which means if I was like ever to commit a crime, they could be like, yeah, well, the biometrics of this fingerprint said it's, it's Andy, and then they'd come get me, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, no, I, I think it's just like, I, I don't know, that's the only thing they ever told me that they were giving away because I had to like sign a disclosure form, but everything else, like, I've never been told any information that's given away. Do you think many people questioned that? that, that? No, <laughs> I questioned it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I just kind of was like, you know, because for my entire school, we did that. That's how we did, like, our, you know, we didn't have lunch money. We had our fingerprint um, and 
they just kind of was like, yeah, if you want to be part of the school, this is how we do it. And they, they said to us that they advertised it as a good thing. They was like, oh, well, with this, we, we eradicate lunch money. So, you know, there'll be none of that in the bullying kind of aspect of things. Which, you know, my mum and me was like, oh, that's great. I'll never get my lunch money taken. That's good. And, uh, you know, for, for the entire school, I just, you know, would just put my thumb down. It was easy. But then, yeah, like Andy said, they, they could have, you know, sold that or used that in, a, in evidence for a crime. But I don't really think it was a, it's not a bad thing. Like, it's just the school is probably just on a computer in an office somewhere. That's probably, and it's gone now. Like, I remember my school telling me in year 11 that they keep all our files for 10 years and then get rid of them. So, like, at, at, you know what I left school 2016 so 2026 they should get rid of all my data like they said they would and if they don't then I don't know maybe we'll have an issue and and what about um data taken off you by companies I think that happens every day you know yeah same <laughs> but they're, they're more sneaky with it they they have they have smart people in in high you know towers thinking of algorithms and things to not I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it trickers or malicious intent or anything like that because it's not because we are told about it, but we're just not like mass, massively educated on, on, on these things, you know? So it's like, yeah, I'm getting told how to drive a car, but until I learn how to drive it, you know, that's illegal. Can't do that. Um, so it just kind of will happen willy nilly if whether we like it or not like I, I often question what happens if i don't accept the cookies do i not get allowed on the website or like if i don't agree to these things am i not allowed to use these websites because like i've never personally done that i might have to try I've, I've done it before it usually just locks you out of the site is that what it does so you can't use a website if you don't agree to these t's and c's I, I can try and get an example of i think not geo has cookies because because can... that's another thing like Terms and conditions are very long, especially mm. apples, which is 42 pages. You I know? read every page. <laughs> you read every page? Yeah, I got an iPhone, so I was like, I'm going to read it because I didn't want to like get turned into a cat without my knowledge or something. Yeah, because that's the thing. They could put in that contract, you know, in five years' time, we earn all your things. And you're just like, yeah, I'll just agree to that. You know, let me sign in my Apple ID. And then five years time, Mr. Well, not Mr. Steve Jobs, whoever owns Apple now knocks on the door. He's like, remember this contract you signed right here? Yeah, we're going to take our iPads back now and stuff like that. And you've just, you've just agreed. And there's nothing you can do about it. As soon as there's a legal document made with your name, your stamp, all stuff like that, it's like you're signing over pieces of yourself. Did you have something to say, Jen? I'm just going to go back to the... Um... You're talking about your biometrics been taken in school, which I thought was really interesting. Um, do you think there you had a choice? Because, like you said, Andy, you were asked to sign something. Um, and Ash, you're talking about, you know, signing a consent process. But obviously, it's not really a, it's not a consent process if you don't have a choice, because that's got to be freely given and you've got to have an alternative. Yeah. Did, you, did you get offered an alternative and, and did that work in school for people that didn't use the fingerprint system? And, and do you think there was any information given to you at the time, like, you know, whether they could or should be able to give it to other third parties? Obviously, you, you were concerned they might be able to use it, you know, not that it was going to be the case, but that they might have been able to use it for policing or yeah. giving it to other third parties. Mm. Obviously, if they'd given you proper information they'd have told you at the time whether they were allowed to do that or not did, did they give you that kind of choice or information they they did give me the information i've been to three different schools so i've got quite a bit of experience when it comes to um people having my data <laughs> um but with the particular school that had the biometric system in place the option for me was i either get the biometric and I'm able to go to the school and participate in the school like I can actually get into the school and stuff because you had to use your thumbprint to like unlock the doors at certain ages um and yeah so you either had to give your thumbprint or you just had to like not go to the school or you could bring like your own packed lunch but it would mean that you were at more of a disadvantage than everyone else so my dad was very like resistant to the idea which is the only reason it drew concern to me uh but it just resulted in me like being very aware that they have my thumbprint and they did say they weren't allowed to use it for anything else but at the same time it's like as much as 
I want to be able to trust your verbal contract. It, it's not like it wasn't on the form. It wasn't on the form at all that they couldn't do this. So it was just, it was iffy. Thanks, Andy. And um, I think we've got, I think we've got one more question. I think that just depends on the input. Like me as a person, I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to be into what I'm into, you know, like, um, the, the the fine tuning of of things for to to like you know that will be like tailor made to me would be so specific that I think in order to change that I would have to change me which a little bit hard because it's me um, but I don't know I think as you grow up you you change as a person anyway like you know I, I you know I don't play with Lego as much as I used to but I still do and maybe when I'm older I might not which is a very sad thought but in the terms of these things, if I was going online shopping for Lego as a kid, slowly throughout my life, I would see less advertisements for Lego because I would shop it less and the algorithm would, you know, it's like it's trying to make a digital version of you that's walking through the internet, you know, to to show you things and, you know, to, to tell, and like with TikTok and things like that, you know, you might go on TikTok and look at, you know, dance videos and then by the end of it, you, you discover new things of like cosplayers and stuff like that and then before you know it, you've gone from the algorithm thinking, hey, this person wants to watch, you know, dance monkey videos to then showing you, you know, loads of people dressed like Harry Potter. Have you got anyone got anything to say about that? I feel like the, the main question is overall how realistic is change in general? And with the current climate of the world, I'd say that change is becoming more and more probable in all fields. Um, but I feel like the change is so vastly needed around every system in the world that in order for this, for any kind of change made to data protection to be influential, the other problems with the world have to at least have some kind of resolve, um, if that makes any sense. I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I feel like people won't stop being as loud as they are on social media until things are better anyway. Um, and people won't, like, will stop being so, uh, what's the word for it, narcissistic on social media if things are, you know, changed within the world so i feel like change overall is needed and i feel like it becomes more and more realistic every day but there's a long way to go anybody got any response to that at all yeah i'd say that um things in terms of change are going to get worse before they get better just because of the current climate people are going to be using more internet more than ever going to be sharing the data more than ever so i think the big companies are going to want to take advantage of that rather than change the ways they act.